of Leuven, Ben Geom, and today uh, he will present the ESO consensus-based definition and guiding framework for motor rehabilitation after stroke. Thank you very much, and thank you very much for the introduction and for the opportunity to uh, present our work here about motor rehabilitation after stroke. So this is not a typical presentation about uh, the result of a guideline production, uh, but it's preparatory work, uh, and hopefully this will become clear at the end. So there are no intellectual disclosures and uh, no financial disclosures. This is uh, the module working group, uh, our membership. I'm very grateful to them all. Uh, as mentioned, together with uh, the co-chair, Market Alt-Murphy from Sweden, this work was conducted, including some early career researchers as well, uh, supported by the ESO head office uh, and also by uh, our mentors. So I think you've seen uh, information with regard to the Stroke Action Plan for Europe, uh, and it's shown here as well. There are uh, a number of targets and also research priorities within seven domains, and one of these domains, they, this target stroke rehabilitation, improving management, outcome, uh, and also quality of life. Now, rehabilitation in the Stroke Action Plan for Europe is defined, and it's defined as is uh, listed there. Um, but of course, there are several subdomains to rehabilitation, and motor rehabilitation is one of them. Um, and among the membership of the module working group, um, there's not really a specific definition of motor rehabilitation. And we, we strongly believe that this would advance the field, uh, together with also a framework expanding uh, and explaining this definition. So this was the aim of our group, uh, to deliver an agreed definition on motor rehabilitation after stroke, uh, supported by a framework, and this framework would uh, be a narrative review of the literature in order to provide a state-of-the-art overview of stroke motor rehabilitation domain. And ultimately, the uh, aim of our work is to guide educators who have to educate people in the field of motor rehabilitation, but also to update clinicians who work with patients uh, daily uh, in order to provide them with a framework on how to approach uh, the work that they do in the motor rehabilitation domain. And finally, also uh, to allow researchers to identify gaps in the evidence base, because there still are gaps. So um, how did we um, go about the development of the definition? Well, um, this started with a panel of experts, a module working group. This was convened by the ESO guideline board and the uh, standards operating procedures that were explained before by other speakers. This was followed as well uh, for defining uh, and convening this group. Then we used a three-round process. So uh, in the first part of the three-round process, there was an online discussion about a topic, a first draft of the definition, and this concluded with an online survey. Now, the online survey was asking the members from the module working group about the agreement with the different parts of the definition. Then, based on the results of the survey, there was a second part, again starting with an online discussion of the results, a revision, and a second round of survey. And a priori, we defined that we needed, for the different parts of the definition, 75% agreement uh, among the module working group in order to accept the, that specific part of the definition. So finally, uh, after uh, the second survey that was conducted, there was a final online presentation of the results uh, and some fine-tuning for the definition. Now also, and this is a next step, um, within the module working group, it was seen as important to consult uh, clinicians that actually work with the patients in the domain of motor rehabilitation. So a convenience sample of clinicians consisting of MDs, PTs, and OTs were um, talked to by the module working group. Their feedback was collated, and at the end of uh, last year, this was discussed with a final fine-tuning uh, in uh, December. So, um, here to present you the definition, so to be clear, this has not been accepted, but we're in the final stage of uh, publishing this. Um, as you will see, this is the first time I will do this, uh, that I put a lot of text on a slide and I will read it as it is. It will probably also be the last time that I do this, but since the importance of having a definition, I think this is relevant. So the definition is the structure of a definition paragraph. So it's not just one or two sentences because the module working group felt that this was actually too limited in scope to 
combine the whole, world, the whole field of motor rehabilitation into uh, a limited number of sentences. So the definition starts with a topic sentence, and the topic sentence presents motor rehabilitation as a process that engages people with stroke in order to benefit their motor function, activity, capacity, and performance in daily life. We see it as necessary for all people with residual motor disability, whose goal is to enhance functioning, independence, and participation. Next, there are three supporting sentences, or supporting parts, and the first part uh, talks about motor rehabilitation, striving to reduce motor impairments and improving functioning in activities through the mechanisms of learning and use-dependent uh, activities. The trajectory of motor and functional recovery varies between patients and stages of recovery. And in early stages, behavioral restitution of motor function depends on underlying mechanisms of spontaneous neurological recovery. In later stages, functional improvements can be achieved by compensations. The second supporting sentence presents motor rehabilitation being guided by regular assessment of motor function and activities using consensus-based measures, including patient-reported outcomes. Results are discussed with patients and carers in order to set personal goals. And the final supporting sentence is the treatment, or focusing on the treatment as motor rehabilitation having a core element, and this core element is the incorporation of principles of motor control where patients learn to optimize and adapt their motor, sensory, and cognitive functioning through appropriately dosed, repetitive, goal-oriented, progressive task and context-specific training. And finally, there's a concluding sentence, and this is motor rehabilitation supports people with stroke to maximize health, well-being, and quality of life. So besides this definition, we present a framework, and the framework expands on the different parts of the definition. At first, we present the ICF as the central concept, as the central concept contextualizing it to motor rehabilitation. This is the overarching theme that we see within the motor rehabilitation domain. Secondly, and this is related to the first supporting uh, sentence, we provide a summary of the biology, the biology of recovery, distinguishing between early versus late recovery, distinguishing between uh, restoration and compensation. We see this as very relevant for the people who work in the domain in order to understand which um, expectations you can have in terms of the recovery process. Thirdly, and this is related to the second supporting sentence, there's an overview of widely recommended motor assessment and prediction tools. Um, this is building on work from, for instance, ISRA, the International Stroke Recovery and Rehabilitation Alliance, who has done some work in this um, as part of their first and second round table, and now also the third round table. So again, this is building on work that has been done and um, bringing together uh, the elements that we know in order to advance the field. And finally, we provide a summary of strongly recommended uh, evidence-based interventions from recent motor uh, rehabilitation guidelines. So for this, we reviewed the literature from 2016 until the present date. We considered the international guidelines that are available, and we saw where there was a match in the strong recommendations that can be, or that were presented in these guidelines. And this is a summary overview that we present. Uh, and I think for clinicians, this will be very helpful in order to see where the match is between these different international guidelines. So uh, an, a couple of elements uh, with regard to the discussion of the whole process. The expertise and the mixed expertise of the module working group, we see this as a strength, as well as the three-round process. This may seem a lengthy process, and you know, time-wise, this is quite a lengthy process, but motor rehabilitation is quite a diverse field and quite a broad domain. So um, I think there needs to be some time in order to digest what you produce and digest the different knowledge that you hear, the input from the different members of the module working group. Also the consultation with clinical stakeholders, we see this as a strength of the approach that we took. As always, there are a number of considerations. Um, our group included people from three global areas of the world. Not all global or not, are, not all areas of the globe were represented. So we believe that provision of motor rehabilitation may differ across the world, but fundamentals of the definition are likely to be similar. 
Uh, secondly, the definition paragraph consists of different elements, so, and it may be longer than a typical definition that you would expect, but motor rehabilitation, in our opinion, is multifaceted and covers different domains, and we wanted to see this reflected in the definition. And finally, we talked about whether to involve um, the stroke survivor, uh, whether to involve uh, the carer in order to provide their input to the definition. And um, although this was discussed, we took the approach of not doing this at this stage because we believe that a definition that is straightforward for everyone will probably not cover the specificity sought after by professionals. And this was the first aim, to inform the educators, to inform the clinicians, and to inform uh, the researchers. We do believe that this is beneficial as a next step in order to provide uh, a lay summary uh, in co-creation with stroke survivors uh, in order to inform them about this domain uh, of um, stroke care. So in conclusion, this is the first ESO consensus-based definition of motor rehabilitation after stroke, and in our opinion, also the first definition of motor rehabilitation after stroke. And it's the basis for producing ESO motor rehabilitation guidelines. This is the current step that we are doing now in order to um, advance the domain and to build on the summary of knowledge that we present, and in order to produce PICOs specific for the motor rehabilitation domain, and uh, subsequently recommendations for clinical practice. Thank you very much.